Hey, I'm Brian Vance, BoardBikeTracker.com, and today I'm going to show you how to install the Cena SRL2 into your all-new Showy GT Air 2 helmet. Okay, the all-new SRL2 from Cena is designed to fit into the Shoei GT Air 2 helmet, and as I understand it, it will also fit into the Shoei Neotech 2, the modular flip-up helmet. We've already done an install video for that helmet. This video is going to be the install only, not a features and benefits and how did it work. The reason behind that is, well, this isn't the kind of stuff that I use. The riding we do is on the racetrack, not on the street. When I use a communicator, I'm snowmobiling, right, and I'm using it just for music, so... Features, benefits, that kind of stuff. Seen as a good company. There's a lot of people that love it. If you look around for reviews, you'll see there's some people that really want to just beat the shit out of them too. In my opinion, that's just what you see with technology like this. There's some people, they couldn't connect to anything with Bluetooth if their life depended on it, okay? So be careful how you take those reviews. Seen as a good company. They have reasonable support. This is only about installing this product into the helmet. Unboxing. When I get it all out of the box, there's instructions in multiple languages. That's fantastic. Um, and the instructions are probably better for actually using it than they are for installing it. And the install instructions are, this is super sweet right here, right? This definitely tells me I probably need glasses because I'm having a difficult time seeing any detail in these pictures. But you have these pictures laid out here to do it. We're going to show you step by step the way that I did it in this helmet. I think I got a nice, clean end result. Here is the unit itself, right, with the speakers. And this is just going to integrate directly into the helmet. It's super bitch, and I'll show you that. Microphone. We have two options that come inside this SRL2 now. Here is the boom mic, right? You got a couple extra covers here. You would use this on a flip up helmet. This is going to be for the Neotech 2. When you flip it up, your little boom still right there, right? but that's in this package. Here is the button mic, right? And this integrates with a little spot that's already molded there in the chin EPS. This helmet's super cool. They give you a little Velcro patch here. You plug that thing right in. There's a nice channel for the wiring. So super clean install. It comes with a charging cable. There is no power block, right? There is just the charging cable. And you can see that that USB just plugs right in there, right? There's a little seal back there, of course, to keep it weather tight. The back portion of the unit. In order to do this install, you're going to need to be able to remove the interior of the helmet and show you how to go through all those steps and what it takes to get the best possible result. Okay, remove the outer shield. You know, do you necessarily have to do that? I don't know, but you know, with a project like this, I look at it like anything you can do to create a little space for yourself is not going to hurt. Pull down on the trigger and then kind of pull outward. This is spring-loaded shield mechanism. It's gonna help you release the outer shield. You can leave the inner one in, just leave it all the way in the upward position. From here, you need to remove the chin curtain first. Take your thumb under the chin curtain, right here like this, and just kind of pull it out like that. You don't wanna pull it back from the corners. The way these tabs are locked in, it's held in really tight. That's just, it's too hard on it. Once you get that out, we need to remove our cheek pads. There's three snaps on the back of these cheek, cheek pads to release them. You want to get your fingers in between the EPS and the back of the cheek pad. Once you've done that, grab it up here at the front, pull backward, and rotate towards the rear of the helmet. It's a mirror image on the other side. Like so. There is not really a reason to necessarily remove the top pad, but just like the outer shield, I'm going to pull that out just to kind of create more space. Two snaps here in the back, this channel up front, really self-explanatory. We'll try to show you on the reinstall so you have a closer look at what it takes to do that. So now we've got the helmet disassembled most of the way. There's a few other pieces that do need to come off to facilitate the installation of the communicator. These outer covers, you need to push down on this tab and pull up and back on this this little closeout panel here. It does take a little bit of pressure to get it off. So depress that and kind of just grab it. And you're kind of pulling like this, right? It's kind of moving in that direction. 
two side panels here in the back. You need to push this clip and then pull up. And then from here, pull, push down and pull out. This piece of foam, take that out as well. There is the pocket that holds the unit. Keep all these pieces. You never know what happens down the road. Keep all the pieces in case you need to put them back in the helmet. Inside the lid, there are molded speaker pockets. You need to get in here, get behind the plastic to deform it a little bit. There's these four tabs that hold it in place, right? So you need to kind of get behind here, just deform it, pull that out. Put that in your pile of stuff you're going to save. Do the same on the other side. Hopefully Caleb's able to catch this. You know, it is, it's kind of dark in here, it is black. Look at that molded pocket there, right, for the wiring to accommodate that. It's pretty sweet. You got the pocket back here, and then you come to the other side. Can you see that, Caleb, or no? There's the pocket there, and then there is a channel that runs from the speaker all the way to the front, which is where the microphone will install on a full-face helmet like the GTR2. Okay, now let's jump into the install and you can let me know if you like the way I did it better than the instructions they showed you there with the kit. I like to open up by installing the unit here in the back of the helmet. It's really important, okay, that you take a look at this before you do it so you understand how far down that's, that's going to go. If you look at this tab, they're the same length. And you'll note this ridge right here. So when you're done installing this, it's all the way in this portion is going to be raised up above, so it's going to sit a little higher than this did. And if you know that going into it, you won't sit there and keep jacking with it, trying to get it to go deeper than it needs to. Start by sliding the unit in like so. You've got this gasket here at the back that you need to get that ridge to dip under. So I'm kind of manipulating that a little bit, kind of pushing it forward. The gasket's pretty pliable. Once you've done that, push in. It locks in place very simply, and you can see now what that looks like. From here, let's go ahead and roll the uh, left side wiring. Get it under that gasket, and you can see that this is the wiring is actually flat. You've got this tab right here that will end up depressing in between the EPS and the outer shell of the helmet. I like to leave that until I've already got the cheek pad into position. I'll show you why. Just kind of roll this around, make sure nothing's twisted up, right? So you get it in there in a way that it's going to make sense. Slide this control panel into its mount, like so. You get the tabs in there, and you can see how that just kind of slides down. It's talking to me right now. The intercom failed. Once I've done that, I want to take this flat harness, and I want to slide it gently in between the outer shell of the helmet and the back of the EPS. I found that the tool Showy supplies with the GTR2 to replace the inner screen can be pretty handy here. It's nice and soft. It seems to be just the right thickness. I'm kind of using that to just help tease that wiring in, in there, right? So you want to get that far enough down in that we can slip our cheek pad in. Now grab your cheek pad and let this all sit as you see it right now. Go ahead and line this up with the post back here. Once you've done that, put a little downward pressure and start to roll this in. Slide it in between the outer shell and the EPS of the helmet. If it takes a tremendous amount of force to get this to seat, you've got some binding. You're going to want to take a breath, pump the brakes, disassemble and take a quick look. This is going in pretty smoothly. I want to make sure that the wiring back here, right, is not trapped underneath anything. Okay, that all looks good. Now I'm going to tuck it in. You can feel that positively engaged here an audible snap. Now take that cheek pad, and you're going to kind of roll it up like that. Grab your speaker. This lines up, and you'll see the wiring pigtail that comes out of the speaker actually lines up with that cutout in the EPS. So it's very easy to align this. Just get the wiring pigtail lined up and just a light push in. That pops in there. It's held in place for all time. No need to mess with that. Okay, now 
Let's go ahead and take that same tool. Just want to continue to tuck that harness just a little bit, very lightly. I'm not really putting a lot of pressure here. Just want to tease it forward as much as I can. And now this needs to go right here, right where the crown portion of the EPS meets the cheek pad portion, and then kind of rock and a little downward pressure, and that slips right in. This harness right here for the speaker, you know what, you could go, I guess, a little further and try and tuck that in there, but it's really pretty tight. I don't think I would choose to do that. It's going to be just fine free-floating here a little bit. Coming to the very rearward portion of the helmet, I want to try and just tuck this harness in a tiniest little bit if I can to hide it a little bit better. You know, don't get lost doing this, I mean, because at the end of the day, you drop that flap over and it's really going to cover quite well. You know, but still, if, if you want to get that super nice, that direct integrated end result, you know, this is where you just kind of take your time. Spend a few extra minutes getting everything lined up. It is very important you don't take anything super sharp or hard and put a ton of pressure on this wiring harness because if you do that you're going to damage it if you damage it you're not going to have warranty on your side and it's going to be a bummer okay so kid gloves here still got the intercom intercoms talking to me still love it intercom fail. i got you baby intercom fail. roger that so just kind of get that in there as nicely as you can if you're able to get all of it tucked away, that is a plus for sure. But I'm pretty happy with where I am right there. Now we need to engage the cheek pad with the snaps. Let's get your chin strap pulled through the groove there. These snaps, right, they engage very nicely, but they're also a little tricky to locate. And that's because of the emergency release system. So I want you to not use a lot of pressure to engage them, just kind of work it around and have a little bit of pressure on it and when you find it just kind of jumps in there you get a nice audible snap. If you find yourself really pushing hard, you don't have it lined up, all you're going to do is break it. Do the same for all three snaps. Like so. You can see this is really pretty clean and we still have the opportunity after the install is completed to fine tune that just a little bit. Okay, now we'll move on to the right side of the helmet. This one's just a tiny bit more complex because we also need to install the microphone here in the chin bar. Pretty simple to do. At the end of the day, they supply a nice little Velcro patch here. You're gonna to wanna to clean the plastic of the chin bar, just degrease it to make sure the adhesive sticks well. Use whatever household product you feel would be appropriate for that. Remove any silicone or any grease. For the purpose of this install, I will not be installing that Velcro patch. We're gonna use a little bit of make-believe there. Use your imagination. Same as I showed you on the other side, let's make sure that we don't have any big twists in the wiring harness or anything. Kinda of roll it around nicely. There's our speaker, here's the outer panel, I believe that's the antenna on this side. Get that locked in, put that in place like so. Now we have the speaker. This has a port to pick up the microphone. I'll slip that in place until it engages. Now we can clip this into the pocket that's molded in. I'll try and rotate this so you can get a good look at it. Can you see that, Caleb? It's probably about the best I can do. Hopefully you can hear that audible click. Drops right into position, lines up quite nicely. From there, the microphone. There is a channel, right? And there's all these tiny little clips. This is going to be super hard to pick up. You need to slip the wire in between the clips to hold it in place. I 
And so you get it all the way to the chin bar. Once you get it to the chin bar, you will have already affixed your little Velcro patch and you'll be able to just put a little pressure on it. It's going to hold it in place quite nicely. From here, we'll focus on getting the cheek pad on the side. The wires all slip down in between the shell and the EPS. The wire that goes up to the antenna side, you want to make sure you tuck that down. This is going to be just a mirror image of what we showed you on the other side, with the exception, instead of having the flat wire that we did on the other side, it was a little thicker, a little heavier gauge. This is a little thinner, so we want to exercise a little more caution on this side, okay, to make sure that we don't do any damage. Get that tucked in. Let's go ahead and grab our cheek pad, as we did on the other side. We're going to slip that down in there. Working from back to front, just kind of a little bit of pressure. Make sure it's going underneath. It locked in real easy up front. So now we can roll this over. Let's see if we can't get that to dip in. If you need to tease any of the wiring, you can use that tool again. That looks almost identical to what it did on the other side. I like that. Pretty happy with it. From here, you can try and hide some of this. A little thicker, and it's not a flat wire, so it's going to be a little tougher on this side. Want to be careful of the amount of pressure that you put on it, so be aware of that at all times. You know, as you go through the install, you get everything done, you get it all buttoned up, you're going to have an opportunity to for some fine tuning. We'll kind of cut that off there. Let's roll this over. Let's find the three snaps like we did on the other side. You have to cut a little bit of that out. With these snaps, you know, don't beat yourself up if they're not going in right away. You get, you get one that, you know, is just kind of like not cooperating. Just move on to the next one. And what I found too is once you, you get the first one to kind of dip in there, it helps to perhaps bring the others more into line a little easier. And you can get them all to snap in place, no problem. Okay, I like that so far. That all looks pretty good. From here, we want to go ahead and get our top pad now. We're ready to slip that into place. I'll show you how to engage that forward channel. What you need to do is you need to be able to get these clips, and you'll feel there's a ridge here, right? It kind of dips down, in, and back okay Do the best we can to show you this pretty tight quarters see how I'm kind of working around there and then the clips that I do get into position you now you want to hold them there using that thumb and now you can probably see why I pulled the outer shield just gives you just a little more operating room Get these all dipped in. Make sure you look all the way around the perimeter. A little pressure on it. 
to ensure that those are all locked into place. The back is very simple. We have literally just the two snaps. Those are a lot easier to locate than the ones we find on the cheek pads. That's all clipped into place. Kind of a little pressure around here. Give you an idea of what that looks like right now. And I would say, personally, I'm, I'm happy with that. I like that. That's a good, clean, finished result. Up here, where the microphone comes around, see if there's anything that I find to be just the tiniest little bit wonky is they have this little like piece of vinyl trim, right, that kind of bridges the gap between the cheek EPS and the chin bar EPS. And it looks like this wire really needs to go over that. There's no way to go through it or behind it that I could see quickly looking at this. The cheek pad holds it quite nicely in the back. You know, it lifts up just a little bit there, and that's just me being hypercritical, probably much more so than I need to be. You can see how well that microphone integrates in there. It looks super nice, very clean. If you're going to reuse the uh, chin curtain, now's the time to install that. What I've found with this is, you know, kind of a one side at a time thing and kind of work around is what worked best for me. Dip that in there, find your locating post on the one side, and then from there you can kind of build and come all the way around. Got to roll this up, get it under that gasket. This seals up really nicely. My expectations would be that this, you know, between the aero tuning they've done with it, right, Shoei's always been famous for great aerodynamics on their lids. Uh, with the aero tuning that they've done, to quiet it and the thickness of this this chin curtain and neck roll this should be a really quiet helmet right especially when this chin curtain is in place all right let's start over on the cut cut don't show any of that fucked up stuff Caleb we're gonna start over Okay, now the chin curtain, we're ready to reinstall that. It's going to take you a hot minute, man. I'm not going to BS you. I've done it a couple of times, and it still takes me a hot minute. I like to kind of start at the back here and find that locating tab. Get that to jump over, and from here, just roll that gasket up a little bit. Need to dip that edge underneath. The way they've got this thing hidden up underneath and all the effort it takes to install it, I highly doubt this is going to be one of those chin curtains that's going to pop out of your helmet at speed and fly behind you when you're on the interstate. All right. So kind of start one side, roll it around. Take your time after to make sure you've got that gasket all pushed into position. Everything's held in there nice and tightly. Last but not least, going to be that outer shield. In our full review of the helmet, kind of cover what it takes to do this. This, this shield mechanism is a little different. You need to put some pressure on it, pull down. Yeah. Scale of 1 to 10, how easy is this one? Not the easiest I've ever done. You can kind of see what I did there. I had a little pressure in towards it, pulling down on that trigger. I'm, I'm sure the dudes at the Showy Factory can do this a little bit better than I just did. You know, how big of a deal is that, you know, considering you basically almost never in the life cycle the helmet need to take it off. Really not a big deal. Double, triple check your work on that shield. The last thing you want to do is have one side, not all the way in. You go for a ride, lift it up, pop, it comes off. That's no bueno. So, recap. There, there is your install. This is your finished product. It looks really, really sleek. It integrates super nicely. You don't have this big thing bolted to the outside of your helmet. Super bitching. In terms of features and benefits, 
We are not going to cover that. This is not something that I'm going to be using with this helmet. This isn't a product that I would normally personally use. You know, once again, my comments on CNR. By and large, they have a good reputation. If you look at the SRL for the Neotech 2, there's people that love it and there's people that hate it. There's also people that, like I said previously, they couldn't connect to anything via Bluetooth if their life was on the line. So you got to look at those reviews and be very, very careful, you know, understanding that some of that could be user error for sure. Uh, in terms of the install, I like what Shoei did. I think it integrates nicely. If you're the type of rider, this is the total package you're looking for. If you want a graphic, with the, in, the integrated uh, SRL and the helmet, you're looking at just short of a thousand. When I say a thousand, it's it's basically six ninety nine plus two ninety nine. You're two pennies short of a thousand dollars. That's a big investment. With that, you have a great quality helmet. You have an integrated communicator from a reputable company. Okay, if you're into it, I think it's worth the investment. I'm Brian Van, SportbikeTrackGear.com.